No. That was his legally distinct cousin. Barth. I don't, I don't know. Here, can I snipe that from here? I almost had that. That would have been a cool shot. I thought it went right by. But yeah. I was going to say the Mario audio was so fitting. I couldn't think of something that sounded similar to Mario in time. Hi. Free colonoscopy. You want one too? They're on the house. They're just giving them out. Oh, that one wasn't. Okay. Though it has to be a character that doesn't already exist. What other objectives are there here? How long have I been dicking around here? There's flowers over there I can burn. Oh, and a whole section up there I haven't gotten to yet. Chris Pratt. Oh yeah, it was Chris Pratt. He yelled that. That's who it was. But yeah, anyway. That's the full truck date. Of all the stuff that's led up to this current point. Maybe by the next time that I stream Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I'll be able to say, hey, it's working like super consistently now and everything is sunshine and rainbows and it's a thing of the distant past that it was like super sketchy and stuff. It was actually Garfield who said we... I remember a whole bunch of people talked about that movie because everyone was like, what the heck? Why is Chris Pratt bringing cast in everything? And then that was like all I ever heard about it. I don't know how much that movie was marketed. I don't know if it ever came out. I just... I just did not really hear about it at all from there. I never really bothered to look into it from there because I... Yeah. <laughs> but it seems so strange. Why are so many animated movie characters just becoming Chris Pratt now? Like, admittedly in the Mario movie, when I actually watched that movie, he was better than he was in the trailers. But I still would have greatly preferred, like, a Charles Martinet. Someone that sounds like him. But I prefer... Also, Charles Martinet is a fun guy. Every time I think about him, I think about the time that <laughs> that he ended up talking to me about the downfall of the U.S. and Russia at, uh, was it Comic-Con? Was it Fan Expo? Something like that. The last time that I, uh, last time that I ever chatted with him. Oh, man. I still never got to reading the books that he recommended me. Yeah, that was a, uh, that was a thing that happened. There was a, uh, there was a time at a Comic-Con where he was there. And there was, like, a big line for signatures and stuff. And I don't really care about, like, signatures, autographs, or whatever the heck. I just wanted to meet him. And so I got in line. And the lines were, like, weird, twisty, turny. And I didn't know, like, how exactly it worked. So I just got in where I thought was the end. And later, it turned out not to be the end. I realized once the line started moving. And, oh, that, that's fine. That wasn't me. And so I asked people around me, like, oh, did I cut in line here? And they all just kind of nodded. They didn't even say anything. I was like, oh, whoops. So I stepped out of line and I went to the back of the line. And then just like, there was a pretty crowded day there. There was a lot of people that wanted to meet him. So like, didn't really get to chat or anything there. Just like a very brief high. But there was a time, I think I was at Fan Expo, where I saw that there was an area for Charles Martinet and there he was just chilling out. And there was nobody. There was literally nobody there. And I didn't really care about going and getting like another autograph thing. I just wanted to chat with him. And I went up there and I was, like was chatting with him. And I said, oh, the last time that I like very briefly met you was during this situation where I accidentally cut in line. And I didn't realize I cut in line and I stepped back like after everyone nodded. And <laughs> he told me, well, you're very lucky that this was in Canada because if you had done that in the States, they probably would have. <laughs> it's what he told me. And I told him, like, oh, I'm actually from, I'm actually from the States. I was initially born in Texas, but my parents moved here and like figuring this is a better place. And he was like, oh, good on your parents. Like that was a, uh, that was a very smart call there. And then we started talking about like the differences of Canada, the United States a little bit. And then he started telling me about like, we just started talking about politics, about like the States and then it extended to Russia later. And he ended up recommending to me a couple books that he'd been reading that delved into the topic, oh my goodness, of the political landscape of the US and Russia. So I have a couple pictures on my phone saved of the books that he recommended me in case I ever wanted to check them out. So I still have those on my camera roll on my phone. My goodness. Oh, there's another guy here. <laughs> and, uh... Yeah. And then another person eventually came and... I was like, all right, well, I guess it's my time to go then. But 
but I was chatting with him there for a decent while. So now, whenever I whenever I think of him, I'm always gonna think of that now. But yeah, I don't know how people can be famous. It seems so incredibly stressful. Yeah. Then again, that's coming from a pretty big introvert. Yeah, I feel like going into content creation as like a streamer here has very much helped me come out of my bubble. A decent little bit. But you know, having a small community here that I'm playing games for is not exactly the same as being famous or anything like that. Um, though I have some people that look at my sub count on YouTube and treat me like I'm famous when I'm not. Like, not remotely. Like, I've had some people ask me questions in DMs or something like that at some point, or ask a question in my Discord server, and I DM them and give them the answer. And some people tell me, like, whoa, this is so cool, I've never had a famous YouTuber talk to me before. I'm like, I'm not, though. I'm actually not, though. I don't know what you're talking about. Or, uh, there was one person at Fragapalooza that, when he was chatting with me, he was like, this is crazy, I've never chatted to a streamer for this long before. And it's like, well, I mean... Anyone can really be a streamer, so, I mean, it's... <laughs> I'm just a guy here playing video games, you know? But, yeah. So, there's some people that are like, Whoa, numbers! Here's a bunch of views on these specific videos, or here's a bunch of subscribers on this channel. He's totally famous. I'm not. I... I really am not. <laughs> this is the case. Yeah, I mean, sorry, you have views that are over... A, videos that are over a million views. I'm well known enough within certain niches. I'll say. People know of me in certain niches. I wouldn't say that I'm famous. <laughs> like, if someone follows a lot of Pokemon content and like reviews of Pokemon content, they might have heard my name. Potentially, what with my essays on Pokemon. Or if someone's really into Roller Coaster Tycoon, then there's a chance they might have heard my name. Like, considering that the graphic designer of the original Roller Coaster Tycoon games was able to hear about me because of my, uh, my video essay on that that he ended up checking out, that was really cool. That's like the coolest person yet that's ever heard of me. Because <laughs> those games were my childhood right there. But yeah, um, that's awesome. Definitely getting out there helps because you get used to it. Yeah, and I think Fragapalooza this year kind of helped with that. What with the uh, the role that I was playing at Frag this year. Where it's like, yep, you just get the stage for all of your tournaments this year. And, uh, oh, he's so tempting to kick. But like, RCT3 was so good. Are you looking forward to Planet Coaster 2 later this year, Guzma? They're adding water parks in Planet Coaster 2. So basically like the soaked expansion of RCT3. The summer air is so good. It would be really nice if they incorporated the Planet Zoo stuff as well. Then it would basically be like RCT3 with both its expansions. That'd be so cool. But hey, at least we're getting water parks. That's still pretty cool. And those were the more exciting things in the zoos anyway in RCT3. Oh, it's so tempting. It might alert that guy, but it's so worth it. Long, hey, Bowser. I am there you are. Okay. Uh, boom. Like <laughs> what was he saying? He started saying something to me. He's a crash roller coasters into people as a kid. It was the funniest shit. It was the best in RCT3 because they'd actually ragged all around. It wasn't as funny in RCT1 and 2 where they just explode. How am I not weakened it enough yet? It still says weakened person phonies control and Minos' is faith. Like, is this just gonna be something I have to do off camera? Because this is taking me forever. What the heck? Anyway. What was I saying? Oh yeah, my role at Fragapalooza this year. What was the fact that I was able to use the stage for all three tournaments? Having that front and center roll there. Wow, I didn't think I'd be able to one-shot you with that. I'm surprised. Usually I can't. Um, during the Fragapalooza staff meetings, when we were talking about the use of the stage and how I was going to be able to use it, like, for the whole tournaments that I was running, the president of Fragapalooza, Gil, he was joking about how, oh, I guess Jake's just the face of Frag this year. <laughs> I kind of nervously laughed about that, like, oh, no. Um, how the heck do I get over to that chest? I do here like how much do I need to weaken it do I need to weaken it all the way well I do yeah I say my name IRL all the time I don't say my legal name I don't do that 
Let I say what I go by. That's nothing new. Ever heard of the horror game Zucosis coming out in September? Looks like if PZ and a horror game had a child. PZ is that plants and plants versus zombies? I usually say that as PVZ, so I assume that's something else. But yeah. No, my first name, I don't care. Swift Winged Bow. Plants, Planet Zoo, if only. <laughs> I've never seen Planet Zoo abbreviated, so I didn't realize what it was for a hot second. Also, the I've barely played Planet Zoo. I have like a few hours in it, but the soundtrack of Planet Zoo is basically the soundtrack of my Minecraft series because it's so nice and tranquil and awesome. And it fits perfectly with the stuff that I was doing when I was playing Minecraft on this channel. That it basically became like my soundtrack. It's so good. But yeah, I, I tried to get into Planet Zoo, but I couldn't quite get into it as much. I was pretty into Planet Coaster. Planet Zoo, I couldn't get as into. And it, there's a lot, a lot that you need to keep track of in it. But yeah, I got Jake from State Farm. I've had a lot of people call me that. I've had people call me that. People in junior high school used to call me Jesus because of my hair. Uh, I guess I'm not laying this on fire. Is there... There's one more treasure chest that I guess I'll get while I'm here. There's another leader over there. Do you have Minecraft? They have a new update where... Yeah, I've heard about that. Where Galacticraft has now been revived now that you can just like launch yourself to space. With the power of new minecarts. Amazingly. Yeah. I haven't played Minecraft in a while. I haven't continued with the Minecraft series on this channel in a while. I know I kind of left it on a cliffhanger the last time I did it. Like, purposefully. So it's like, hey, here's like an end to this part of our story. Even if it is kind of a cliffhanger. And then it'll lead into like the next part after a break anyway. But it's been a pretty long break now. Just because I haven't had any time to play Minecraft around here. I have too many other games going on. Too many other projects. Like, at least now that Fragapalooza is through, I don't have to worry about like getting ready for the tournaments there it still says weaken the control in minos's faith like how much do i need to do there like do i just generally need to do it does it show how much i need to do it by here i will here we go we can persephone's control in minos's faith it still says that that objective isn't done i killed like everybody in this fort and they're not weakened enough <laughs> I kicked them all off cliffs. I somehow did it without dying. If this was the main game, I probably would have died several times by now. Maybe now that I see it as Elden Ring in my head, maybe I'm just a better player now. I'm playing more carefully than I normally would. I don't know. Yeah, let's see here. They need to use the Chris Pratt Wii with it. That's what we need. And then that'll really weaken their resolve. Weaken their control here. They're like, oh no, now we're facing Chris Pratt's Wii. We have to give up our control here or whatever the heck. Yeah, I still expecting Final Fantasy 16 to be 2025. I was speaking of Final Fantasy 16. They just announced a PC version of the game. Yeah, I saw that in the Discord server. But now that I own it on PlayStation 5, like I'll just play it on that when the time comes is what I might just do. Yeah, there's there's a lot of them, a lot more than just the number that's there. But speaking of, have you heard of the hit MMORPG Final Fantasy 14? Yeah. Which includes a free trial that includes... Uh, I, I wish I knew the whole copy pasta, but I don't. One funny post on Tumblr of why the yeah. dev of DDL gave Xenomorph a huge butt. What? Wait, what's the context of this? Which would have better graphics, PS5 or PC? If I was playing without streaming, maybe PC. But with streaming, and therefore my capture card being used for the streaming process as well, then maybe PS5. I don't know. How powerful is the PS5? I do have a RTX 3070 in this machine, which there are far better graphics cards now. I know that there's like the 40 series, but I mean, looking at this, it can run things pretty well. And now that I have like my CPU upgrade, I can sometimes play this without like the frame rate absolutely tanking. You love the Xenomami and TBD? Do you play Dead by Daylight? That's one of the... I don't play it much anymore, but that's one of the games I have like some of the most hours in. You too. Oh, jeez. I only play it like a few times a year nowadays, but, uh, and that's usually just like with friends, the case. And I did, especially earlier this stream, I reached out to the streamer that was going to be streaming Dead by Daylight for Fragapalooza at the event to say, hey, you want to play Dead by Daylight together? And I never got a response and I was like, oh, well, never mind then. Um, <laughs> so that didn't end up happening. So I don't really know any of the new killers. Like, I know the Xenomorph got added a decent while back. So sometimes I'll play with one of my longtime online friendos and one of the channel mods here, Aniki. And I'll 
like i'm still pretty decently good at the game i think but whenever i'm faced with a new killer i'm like what the heck even is this i remember facing off against the dredge and with a head-on build and i got screwed so hard like because <laughs> my build was based completely around lockers and his power is based around lockers so i would go into lockers to prepare for a head-on and just get completely screwed and it sucked and so yeah i i was not very impressed playing against the dredge because i love me head-on strats I got so bored of just playing the game like the most try-hard way for a long time and just trying to use the strongest builds that I just started dicking around and so head-on is usually my go-to build head-on quick and quiet that's the uh, that's the way to go I love to see it but yeah speaking of graphics that just remind you that Tales of Arise graphics think no matter what console you're running on it's always going to be amazing oh yeah Tales of Arise was fantastic there but yeah and you mean Dead by Daylight, not DDL. Okay, I was wondering what DDL meant. <laughs> was the case. I was like, what the heck is that? But now I know. I don't think I've ever faced off against a Xenomorph in Dead by Daylight. I've played on its map, but I haven't, uh... But I haven't actually played against a Xenomorph, I don't think. I don't even know what its power is. I'm gonna be honest. Can't be playing with friends too? She got you into it. <laughs> All that convinced you was caked up Xenomorph. Oh, God. Have you got to know Anima or Aniki, both of which are channel mods around here, who I met through Dead by Daylight? They would probably, like, gladly chat about that, like, endlessly. They're all about that. Uh, <laughs> lucky that Anima's not here right now. Let's see here. Yeah, so over this way. Let me really quickly quick save. But yeah, yeah, Xenomorph was one of the killers there. The unknown scared the shit out of you the first time. Didn't know I had the ability to make doppelgangers. What's the unknown? I assume not the unknown from the Willy Wonka experience, but something else. Because I straight up don't know. I could boot up Dead by Daylight right now. I have it installed and see what some of these killers are. Check out the shop. Stuff. Where the heck is this fort? Is it down here? I have the queen as a cosmetic, but she's oddly clapped up to be a Wednesday afternoon. I don't... Oh, I was about to say, I don't know who the queen is, but I assume that would mean like Queen Xenomorph. Is it bad that I haven't seen any of the alien movies? I think I have them on VHS in the other room. Where the heck is this for? Yeah, let's see here. And the new alien movie, Romulus, is absolutely fantastic. For once, they finally made a good movie. It's rated as the third best movie in the series after the first alien movie and the second movie, Aliens. Huh. I don't watch a whole lot of horror movies in general, so I haven't, uh, I have not seen it. Where is this for? I need to kick people off cliffs and weaken power here or something. Is this it? And you haven't either? But no more about it than me than I guess probably from playing Dead by Daylight would be the case. But yeah, I used to love my head on builds and just messing around. There was a time, like, in my early days of YouTube, before I knew what exactly it was I was gonna be doing as like well, I guess my main content is still playthrough stuff like this, just playing games that I enjoy. But it's not how you get new people around to a channel, because everybody and their mother does playthroughs. Like, you're not going to get discovered that way. So back when I was experimenting around with different content types, trying to find something that clicked, and before I found video essays, one of the things I experimented around with was Dead by Daylight guides. So there's a few videos that I have <laughs> that were just, like, really in-depth guides on Dead by Daylight, on, like, looping and routes and... There was like a 40 minute video I did on pallets several years ago. And some of those videos actually got like a decent few views, but not anything like amazing. I don't know where the heck this place. Oh, it's right there. It looks like, I guess I'll go up this, but it never really took off like my video essays did. So I never really continued with it all that much it was the case. But there was a time that I was so into Dead by Daylight that I was literally making guides for the game. Yeah, I finally finished binging Fast and Furious. Did they ever stop at a gas station? That's something I've always been curious about. But as someone that's never watched the Fast and Furious movies, is if any singular time across the entire series they stopped at a gas station. Uh, by finishing me, I only watched up to the fifth one because the rest after that are mediocre. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, well, I was originally going to take your brother to see the new Deadpool movie. You already seen it, but then you heard how good the Romulus movie was. So we went to go see it, and it was actually really good. Okay. Spoilers, there's a Xenomorph at the end that's born from originally being a human. So the newborn gets Xenomorph cells fused with it. So it's Metroid Fusion. So it literally becomes a human Xenomorph hybrid. And so it's absolutely creepy, but really cool. Metroid Fusion and Metroid Dread intensifies. How do I parkour up this? I can't hardcore parkour enough. There we go. Jeez. 
You can Nuzlocke DBD if you don't want to be bored, lose a game permadeath, you're a killer. <laughs> yeah, just, just handle it that way. That sounds like a great idea there. Okay, is this going to be a restricted area? Because it showed that this was like a fort or something. It's marked red as if it'd be a place that I go to weaken their hold on the place. But I don't know that it is. I don't think there's any bad guys here. I might have just come here for nothing. So where then do I go to weaken the strength? I already took down the main fort and killed the leader and that wasn't good enough. Is it that? Did I go to the wrong place? What? What was it trying to show me here? All right. Top 10 lies in video game history, I guess. I mean, there's a teleporty thing there. What? What are you trying to show me? I, d I don't know what you just marked, but okay. I'm genuinely so confused right now. So the human Xeomorph is hypothetically compatible. We got to add him to the list with Vaporeon. Oh, God. Why, oh why? <laughs> you know, thinking about that, I, uh, I know Star Bomb doesn't produce, like, things super duper consistently, but a few days ago, there was a new Star Bomb music video that went up. That was the Pokemon Smasher Pass music video, where the joke was that Smash was being said to absolutely everything, and going into it blind the first time, it, it will crack me. It, it will crack me up? It did crack me up, I'm gonna be honest. Um... What the heck do I do? Do I go to this and then I teleport up here and then I ride over to this fort or something? Oh, so that's the one down. It's gotta be that. And then this is the way up. Wait, but I gotta get over there. So it's a whole puzzle to get over there. How do I get up this? Oh my goodness. I didn't realize that I was playing Getting Over with Bennett Foddy here. Look at this fort. And I don't even know if this is going to tick off the objective of weaken Persephone's control and Minus's faith or whatever the heck if they're all gonna be like this then I might just do the weaken them objective off camera because what the heck just do it sometime when I have free time or I'm out of the family's late cabin or something and I want a video game to play why can't I go up this I'm so confused I I just can't go up it because if I have to take this much time when I was reading up on how long to beat at the beginning of the stream, it said that this DLC was 15 hours. But if I have to do this for each one of these three objectives, that itself is part of like three or four quests that I have to do for a big main thing, then I, I don't know if I see it being 15 hours. How do I get up this? Like, I assume I go around here some way, somehow. But how? I can't climb these pillars. You would think the starting point would be this statue. Ever seen Markiplier's Pokemon Smasher Pass? I have. And MatPat tried to create his perfect Pokemon and he passed. So MatPat tried again. It was absolutely hilarious. I don't think I've seen the follow-up from that. Enhance your Spider-Man abilities and climb the wall? Ah, uh, yes. I just have to have a radioactive spider bite me. Then, uh, then I'll be able to do that. Usually in this game, you could climb anything. Usually you can climb things that clearly don't look like they have grip, but not this time. Do I have to ride from there how would i get up there is that a thing i can climb is that what i do and then i bring it all the way around town because i might be able to scale that wall it'll just take like forever i'm gonna quick save here i'll try because i genuinely don't know what to do otherwise like i <laughs> i'm so lost here there and i should be able to reload that quick save when i get back up there i think Hopefully. Usually quick saves. I'm just reloading when I die. This tree is clipping into this wall, as trees do in their natural environments. Like, just climb all the way up to this rope, I guess, or something? Is what I better do? It was funny. <laughs> Thinking about Smasher Pass, there was this one time that I was out at my family's lake cabin, along with my cousin's kids, and... Because, of course, the internet being the way that it is, of course, they had heard, like, all about that kind of thing. And back when it was, like, super trending still. When we had pulled up, like, the, uh, the menu of, like, all the different characters in Smash Bros. It was their idea to do, like, to, for the three of us to say Smash or Pass to, like, the entire Smash roster. And keep in mind, they're currently, I believe, as of now, at least, 
at the time 12, now currently 13 and 14 respectively. So it's like, they're still pretty young and it's like, well, this seems like a very strange thing to be talking about with minors. And they're the ones that brought it up. But it was, it was very odd. But yeah, speaking of plants clipping through walls as they do, how's your tomato plants doing? They're doing pretty good actually. I've actually been picking a lot of fruit from them. And when I had the neighbors over to take one of them for a drive in my truck earlier today, before that point, they wanted to come over and see my tomato plants. So I was showing it to them and showing them like the graph points. And I brought several like cherry tomato tomatoes that I picked over there to, uh, to share with them. Because they're willing to give me some grapes so I can grow grapes from seed. And they're not quite ripe yet, but they will be soon. So I want to grow as many plants from seed as I can and one day when I move into my own place, just have like a whole bunch of things that I can say, hey, I grew that from seed. So grab some grapes from them one day. It'll be the case. Yeah, this is quite the path to get to this teleporter. Yoink. Yeah, let's see here. You know what's funny? Literally rewatch that video last night. Markiplier's smash and pass video. Nice. And I know that's been a topic that's come up in like stream conversations before. I think the last time that it came up in stream conversation was during Fire Emblem Fates. And then after one thing led to another, like, I don't remember what part it was in the Fire Emblem Fates series. But I know that it happened at one point in the Fire Emblem Fates series. That I made a whole smash of paths for that game. And then I assigned people it as homework. For the next time I stream Fire Emblem, come to me with like your smash or pass list for Fire Emblem Fates. And I said it as a joke, but then some people actually did. And came to me the following stream of Fates with their own personal lists of smash or pass. <laughs> and I was surprised when some people were submitting their homework to me. <laughs> How do I get through this? I'm so confused. But yeah, so many of the smash characters are smash, but that's why it's called Super Smash Bros for real. I heard those first two notes. And I thought this was like oblivion music coming in for a second. Do I just have to like, is that the puzzle? I think you were the one who started by mentioning that corn was hot. Yeah, that could have been the beginning of the conversation. Might well have been. Who also just so happens to be a Smash Bros character as well. But yeah. And OMG, you take your plant for drives? No. <laughs> Imagine. One of the first things I did after I got my truck on the road for the first time last year is I hauled potatoes with it. After harvesting all those for my potato patch at my homeless place. So you could say I hauled plants with that was the case and there was a cherry tree that I brought home that I tried to save but it was all right too far gone but yeah just saw her face and thought yeah she's on <laughs> oh there's a chest there um what the heck so this is the fort that I've been working towards right wait it's a question mark I thought the fort was already marked as red where am I going I feel like I'm playing Tears of the Kingdom out here by traversing like a bunch of sky islands or something like that. This is what I feel like. But that looks like an ability point thing. So I guess by traversing this all, I get an ability point at the end, which is a nice reward at least. Wink. Wink. Also have dragon. For those that are into that. Okay, bop, this way we go. But yeah, I was, I was definitely surprised when people brought me their lists. Find Keeper's Insight. What the heck is that? It's not that. It's a slightly different symbol, but I don't know what the Keeper's Insight is. I've been trying to find this fort, and I found my way to... Wait. Keeper's Insight. Isn't that the, uh... Staff of Hermes upgrades are gained by finding Keeper's Insights. These are found inside Perception of Hermes locations. Happens allowed you to access new versions of some of your abilities that have been upgraded in Tier 3. Oh. So this is important. So this is actually an important thing. Not jump out the window. Let's quick save here from time to time. Okay, so this is actually gonna be really good to get. Dude, during Christmas, you should put a Christmas tree on the back of the Mercury so it's a little red truck hauling a Christmas tree. I don't think we have any ones that are like a good medium size for that. None of my actual trees that I have in pots are big enough to warrant that yet. And the only really little tree that, well, we have like a full-size plastic tree. We used to get like full-size, like regular trees in here, but there's a lot of work and it seems kind of like a waste. So we eventually started using plastic trees. We could in theory set up the, uh, why can't I scale this rock? 
<laughs> the plastic tree that we have here. Bring it out to the lake. Something like that. And for, you know, thinking about that. For Christmas this last year, one of my co-workers actually made me, like, a little Mercury Christmas ornament. I have it hanging on my game shelf. Hold on. Exactly that design, as a matter of fact, with the tree out the back. This was a gift to me last year from one of my co-workers to hang on the tree. What if I switched to only this? Whoa, best viewers, let's go ahead and ban that really quickly. And, yep, we go ahead and ban that. But yeah, that. So I might not have, like, an actual photo of that happening, but I do have an actual ornament that was made for me as a gift of exactly what was described. Interestingly enough, so that just hangs on my game shelf because I think it's cool. Oh. Now I'm cold. Blanket back on legs. Um, <laughs> but yeah, let's see here. Here's what we are men of culture. That's right. Half Dragon just makes them ten times better. Facts. Wait. Oh, that's a skill point thing. Wait, how low down is that? Can I check? Hmm? Veiled Altar of Hermes. Um... If we don't express our passion of finding others hot, then we are very boring people. <laughs> How the heck do I... Is this a thing? I'm so confused. Yeah, apply on getting a life-size skeleton for the month of October and having him sitting in your passenger seat perfect for your favorite holiday. That would be really fun to do with the Fargo if it's not in the shop at the time, which it might well be. I thought that would have been fun to do last year is have that parked like in front of the house and have like a skeleton in the uh have a skeleton in the seat maybe put him behind the driver's seat because you know realistically someone that would have been like the original owner of something like that probably wouldn't be around anymore that or like in a state where they might not be able to drive well i guess it's not that old it's not that that old there probably would be some people that would still be original owners of a 1953 around but not a whole lot just have a just have some dark humor in there hopefully the farmer who would be the who was the original owner of that hopefully his ghost wouldn't haunt me for doing something like that but yeah have a group of skeletons in the truck bed yeah or just do that something like that but yeah and yeah it's a really nice ornament just realized you wouldn't have been able to ban it anyway racist in peace mod says oh yeah you timed yourself out i forgot you weren't modded <laughs> i honestly forgot Slash mod Guzma, ya yeah boy. Sorry about that, Guzma. <laughs> I honestly forgot. I didn't even notice. Got a little bit too lost in the sauce here. It's the altar of herpes. Yes, we gotta make it to the altar of herpes. Where the interest in dragons was a little bit too strong and it led to this awful altar we see today. Um, you can time yourself out. Yep, you can redeem channel points and time yourself out. One of the best points to redemptions. Where am I going? Like. I don't see that triangle here anymore. There's a guy there? What do you want to show me? <laughs> they do be. People really like the dragons that I brought at Fragapalooza. Makes me glad. How'd a ship get up here? Like, what even? I could have sworn there was some sort of weird triangle up here before. Wait, it's here. Build altar of herpes. <laughs> so I just go in here. On top of dragons, got an entire list of hear me out characters on my keep notes. <laughs> that are all dragons. All right, jump into the hole. Well, that was convenient. Okay, so. Nice glad to hear anyone that was super enthusiastic about it. Probably Maverick, one of the frag staff. <laughs> That's who I'd say. Yeah, so I guess I just have that staff with me at all times. Ability enhancements. Ability enhancements are first civilization artifacts that modify and empower existing abilities. They can be equipped in the abilities menu. Oh, so I just put it onto an existing thing, right? Hold on. Equip enhancements. To activate an ability enhancement, the related ability must be fully upgraded to rank 3. Oh, so I just specifically got the one for Bull Rush here. Enhance the ability by pressing X when it's upgrade, and then assign your ability wheel to use it. Ability enhancements can be activated or deactivated at any time from you. Enhancement preview. Summon a bull that charges through enemies and knocks them down. Wait! 
I only got level one of Bull Rush because I hoped it could be a kick that would hit multiple enemies, but it like barely launched them. And so I never upgraded past that point. But if the ultimate version does that, I totally could AOE people off cliffs. Yo. My two points that I've been saving up, I'm putting it into this. And then enhance. Wait, enhance. So the default thing is uh, finishes down with a heavy smash attack. Wait, finishes with a heavy smash attack. I don't even see the heavy smash attack in there. But enhance. Ares bull charge. I gotta assign to something now. Um, Here, let's do this. And then I can assign the that to... I'm not using the shield thing all that much right now. I'm not using fire all that much either. Um, no, I I want the fire. Let's take off the shield thing for now. That's what I think we're going to do. Okay. Yeah, and I have my alternate kick if I want an AOE kick. All right. I'm liking the sound of this. Location complete. Open up. I already opened ability menu. Why am I doing this? Um, hold on. I, will you mind if I jack your shit? Guess not. Let's not set myself on fire. That'd be embarrassing and also very flammable. Um, but yeah. Anyway, yeah, what I was saying there, Maverick was probably the most enthusiastic. He's one of the members of Fragstaff. He's someone that I talk to about vehicle stuff a decent bit because he works at a racetrack. And he, uh, vehicles is very much his field. Um, so last year, I remember I showed him my Fargo out in the parking lot and we were chatting about it a decent bit. Um... Is there another thing here that I missed while I'm here? I don't know. All right, I guess I'll go down in that case or I'll quick save really quickly first. Um, anyway, he saw my dragons and he thought that they were like the most awesome things. And I was like, well, if there's some spare after the tournaments, I can let you know. And he thought that'd be like the most awesome idea. So after the tournaments were through, I went over to where he was at the head table. I said like, all the tournaments are done. I've given out the prizes if you still want a dragon. And he immediately just like closed everything he was doing. He was like, I gotta come over right now. And he came over to my table and he was like, oh, they're so cool. Th maybe this one I want. No, this one's cool too. And he ended up getting this tricolor one. This uh, this one that was made from a three color filament is what he ended up yoinking. And he, he really liked that. <laughs> He's so silly. He definitely is. And he really liked the dragon. So the only people that I gave extra dragons to like, apart from the tournament prizes after the fact that I got the chance to there, were Maverick and Cernal. Because, whoa! Because apparently his nephew, who had played in the Smash tournament, thought the dragons were really cool, and he had expressed to him that he really wanted one, if at all possible. He was like, all right, I'll chat to Harmonia and see what can be done. So I told him after the tournaments, like, yeah, I have extra dragons now if you want to, if you want to pick one out. And he told me later that, like, he loved it and that it was great. So those are the ones after the tournaments. And of course, there was the ones that I gave to, uh, that I gave to Kane and Dub Spider because those, why can't I make it over there? Those are my two key opponents from doubles in 2019, my first year coming to Fragapalooza. And so I had some time and I wanted to make dragons specifically for them based on the characters that they played. And I'm glad that they seem to really like them. So that was good there. But yeah, and let's see here. Um, what else did I miss? Wait, Rushram is probably your favorite design dragon of all time, minus the big dick stretching out from its crotch. <laughs> but yeah, okay, hear me out. Bumblebee from Transformers. Do I want to hear you out? <laughs> no, uh, gosh dang it, I did it again! <laughs> I have to go back again. Bumblebee is pretty cool though, let's face it. But yeah, remind me of the time when parents tried canceling Pokémon Tournament because they thought Blaziken's crotch chuffed was genitals? Wait, what? How did I never hear of this? What? I... Oh my goodness gracious. I've never heard this before. And usually when there's like really silly controversies going around Pokemon, usually I hear about it. But I did not hear about that one. Will be could be a daily ride both in the bedroom and on the streets. It's convenient. Oh, we got that convenient lockdown. That convenience lockdown. I can't words. Okay, hold A. There. Jeez. I'm so good at video games. There's articles about it all over the internet. I'm going to have to look into it sometime later. Not for any uh, nefarious reasons, mind you. But, uh... <laughs> okay, Forge Staff of the Isu. I did the thing. But, yeah. Let's see. 
and that controversy. They killed for Russia Ram too. Jeez. Well, I I did a whole bunch of stuff around here, and I never. Oh, I did the stuff here, but despite it being red, it wasn't a fort. Where do I go to kill people to weaken the area? Like, have I done the objective, but the game just doesn't tell me until I've done all three? How does it work? I could look up that long play and see what happens. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look up that long play. What does the person in the video do? I'm curious. I swear I have it open in one of these things, right? Yeah, I do. Hold on. But yeah, and other stuff that I miss. Again, has a dragon displayed above the big TV. He loves it. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear it. Did he ever end up giving it the stash? I know that most of my dragons around here aren't stashed because I like to play around with them and the stash is kind of fragile if you glue it in, but it does look pretty cool with the stash. Like, I mean, the one right under my hat here, for example, is stashed. Probably looks pretty cool with it. I have a stash around just in case I ever uh, want to give it a stash, but yeah, let's just leave it stashless for now. Most of the ones on my desk at work are stashed. Is the case here. But yeah, uh, still hasn't put up the mustache on the dragon, but he's worried about breaking it, which is so funny. You're going to cherish that thing until the day he dies. The emergent stash. Yeah, I think I have some stashes in my desk here somewhere. I think. Eh, somewhere. Just all over the place right now. I know I have stashes somewhere. I still have some that are just like rubber banded to uh, some of the dragons that I brought home from Frag. It's on my keyboard over there right now. I just have a dragon on either side of the place where you can put up sheet music, which I've never done because I don't know how to read sheet music on piano. I don't know how to do that on guitar. But that black one there still has its stash, like rubber banded to the bottom. And then there's an all green one to the left that was like before I got cool filaments. One that I printed for myself like forever ago. That I'm not gonna give away something like that because it's just a single color. I'm only gonna give away like the cool things at Frag. Let's see here. So display capture. Let's look at this a long play and see what the heck is going on. Still won't go get over how he got the Exolotl and you thought you'd like it. He's such a goober. <laughs> that is pretty fun, though. Yeah, because most of what I had there was more dragons, but I printed some Axolotls and a bunch of Mario mushrooms as well, because I thought people would get a kick out of those. I can take the one out of this box to go to Germany. I managed to print four of these in time to go to Fragapalooza, and people seem to really like them because they're containers. I mean, I have a couple at work. And yeah, these got taken like immediately. People seem to really like them. So maybe I'll have to make some more mushrooms next year. That I might have to do. They take a... Come on, get on there. They take a little bit more effort because I have to glue some stuff. Glue the white dots and the eyes. But not too much effort. Things that would be really, really cool prizes would probably be things like Pokeballs. Like I'm sure people would probably really like something like that where it opens up and you can display them and stuff. But this is too much effort for frag prizes. Otherwise, I would do this. This is so much print time. Each one of these tops and like the insides is like four hours each. And it's like 20 minutes for the button, 15 minutes for each of the energies there. But then I have to glue in a hinge. I have to glue these to the actual outsides. I have to glue this to this. I have to glue magnets into here and here. And I paint the dots on the inside, the little golden spots like that. So... Even though they're really cool and people really like them, and I have given these out as, like, gifts and stuff before, it's a little bit too much effort to be making ones for, like, 12-plus people at Fragapalooza. So, yeah, it's it's a bit much there. Also, I've also 3D printed, like, inserts for Nintendo Switch games, so you can put that in here. Well, other way around, I believe, here. And then the Pokeball becomes a place that you can put Nintendo Switch games, because there's now slots for that. <laughs> is the case. So, this Pokeball is being sent to Germany. I mean, there's several different Pokeball designs in that same thing. Like, there's Pokeballs, there's Master Balls, and I have a few of them, like, around and stuff, but a little bit much effort. But they are pretty fun prints. They're one of my more favorite prints. The dragons are pretty cool things that people really like, and they're convenient for me because they just print in one go, and I don't have to do, like, any assembly. I would have to do mustache assembly if I did that, but I... I don't because it would make them so fragile. So, yeah. Dragons are convenient while being cool. Those are cool, but they're not at all convenient. Those take me effort. What quest am I on? What is it called again? Give them Hades. When do you do give them Hades? And how quickly do you do it? Let's see here. But yeah. And let's see. That brings you the most random stuff sometimes. Like, got your crochet Pokeball they have displayed on your Pokemon shelf. Nice. <laughs> 
I still have the one that you gave me on your desk. Nice. If you ever want any more Pokeballs, Guzma, just let me know. And that'd be sick. Oh, geez. Yeah, that'd be a lot of work. Do I have a favorite Pokeball? I don't quite like how the Master Ball turned out because the light purple dots on the top don't quite perfectly line up. I think the Premier Ball turned out pretty well. Um, the Luxury Ball that I made for Guzma looks pretty good. If I can, whoa, if I can find that really quickly here. Like, let's see. If I... Wow. Mark things as red really quickly and then send this image to myself. I don't have these Pokeballs anymore. I gave them to Guzma. Uh, one of the buttons on your Pokeball came off when you had to glue it back. That's happened to me with like several of the Pokeballs that I've given away. Like before I give them away. And then I have to re-glue them. Like that's what happened with that Premier Ball. So they uh, don't exactly stay on super well. They are on with just a little bit of, a little bit of glue. So they can come off pretty easy. Where was the New Orleans trip? Let's see here. When I took a photo of all the stuff that I printed for you, Guzma. Um, let's see here. That was in Texas. Gotta scroll down until I find your place. That was Galveston Island. Scroll on further. There's our charter fishing. There's the restaurant with amazing fish. Here's the stuff I printed for you. Here we go. Let's add that. I'll send an image of Dialga too, just because that's probably like the coolest thing that I've ever printed, like at all, I would say. The, uh, booty bop. This is probably my favorite thing I've ever printed, but man, was that a lot of painting time work since I can only print in like one color at a time. So lots of painting involved in that, but I loved how it turned out. It's too bad that parts of these things broke off and had to be re-glued on the other end. But yeah, the this. Because I can color change if it's a straight line, like have it print up to a certain point, tell it to pause, unload the current color, put in another color. I can color change that way. So I was actually able to do the premiere ball, not all that half bad. And then I took the dusk ball design and turned it into like a team skull themed Pokeball with the coloration and stuff. So I actually think the premiere ball turned out pretty good. I think it would have turned out better. Let's just make sure I'm clicked onto this. I think it would have turned out better if there was a way to get it to do like the actual rim here with the other color. Like I could have also alternatively just had it just print, print in solid black down here and then just paint the silver on after. I don't know how well the silver would show up on black. I'm, I'm not entirely sure here. And then this was like patient zero here in the whole three color thing when you asked about like if you could do a few colors and then I did this three color design. Several of my dragons that I gave away for Fragapalooza have used this three color design. Different colors than this. I didn't make any ones that looked exactly like this, but ones with color change here and color change there. I definitely printed a few of because it looks kind of cool that way with like one color of spikes, one color body and one color, one color belly there. But yeah, let's see here. And yeah, the team skull there because he's Guzma is the case. Owns the official team skull discord server. So I had to, I had to make him some team skull things when I was visiting him there. And of course, I love how the night killer turned out. It could have definitely turned out better. It wasn't perfect. And I kind of screwed up on the wrapping here afterwards. But generally, I think it turned out like pretty all righty was the case. Maybe once the next season of solo leveling comes out, if it's something that I end up getting really into, maybe I'll end up making myself a night killer one day because it is a cool blade. Let's face it. And the color changes along the way worked pretty well. And there was like the horn broken off of that poor guy there. Screwed up wear, literally flawless looking. On the, this is the good side. The bad side is the other side. <laughs> is, is the case. Because it printed up, like, the way that this model was designed was each of these blade pieces was designed to be printed vertically. So as it prints, like it goes up like that. I printed them horizontally so I could color change. So I could get black and then red and then black. And then the gold I just painted. Otherwise, there would be a line of gold right here. And these ones turned out not half bad because they were like flat on the print bed. So the other side, the black part is just like the texture of my print bed while looking a bit smoother here because this is where I printed the top. This side, it looks smooth on the top. But the other side, this side wasn't flat on the print bed. It was elevated because of this section here. So I needed it to print supports on the other side to keep that elevated so that it wouldn't droop. So... The back side of these two pieces looks pretty good. Just different than this side. 
but the backside of this one looks not super great because it printed in midair on supports due to this. So this is kind of its good angle <laughs> is, uh, is the case here. And then there was my failed print of the Relic Fragment and then the successful print. And then why are those axolotls? And of course, Chubby Crocodile because Louisiana. Um, <laughs> Was the uh, was the case, but yeah, I think it turned out pretty alrighty for the most part. The original model design intended it to be painted, like just print in white or something like that vertically, and then just paint the colors. I think it looks a lot cooler the plastic actually being those colors, and then just a little bit of painting. But then of course you have one good side, one bad side. So you know, anything in three D printing is there's upsides and downsides, and then there was like painting and stuff done here for these guys, and of course the transition filament on the switch dock turned out super good. I think. But yeah, Season 2 is coming out this year. They had a new trailer too. It's freaking awesome. Okay. The uh, tape has not come off yet, by the way. Oh, of like the wrapping? Oh, the dagger? That's good. Hopefully uh, hopefully it stays that way. Well, bro, just walk into your house take photos <laughs> 3D printed. Well, I got to his house before he was back from work. Guzma lives in the far off land of Louisiana when I was visiting him this year. I Whoops, that's my camera. I want to turn off this. No, no I don't want to turn off that. I want to go back to this. Uh, <laughs> When I was visiting him, I was like, okay, if I'm coming anyway, I better like fill my suitcase with a bunch of 3D printed stuff and give him like a whole bunch of 3D printed doohickeys. And I did. Um, but he wasn't at home when I first got there. And so mom let me in and I put out a whole bunch of 3D printed stuff on the desk. And I took a picture because I wanted to do a full inventory. Is that Eevee with the rock face? I have one in the house here. It's upstairs. It's the rock type Eevee Lucian. There's actually a lot of rock type designs people have made for 3D printing. If I go to printables, uh, one of my cousin's kid's favorite is the Rocktopus. Rocktopus, if I just look that up. Yeah. Like, people put the rock's head on a lot, a lot of things in the 3D printing community. There's also a rock lobster. That's pretty good, too. Maybe it's on Thingiverse? Thingiverse. I know there's some around on some of these different sites. Rock the lobster. I've seen it printed out before. People have put the rock's head on a lot of things. And like fully articulated so you can move them around. The Eevee is the only rock thing I've printed before. But like I can print one of these whenever I, <laughs> whenever I feel like it. That's what I could do. That looks almost like the color that I printed axolotls in. It's kind of what it looks like. Actually, I could load up some filament and print one right now. Um, What quest am I doing again? Give them Hades. Wait, let's look here. It doesn't say it here. Give that. What? Does this person do it off camera too? Is this an optional quest? Have I been dicking around doing something that I don't even need to do to progress the story? Is that what's going on here? Like, I. I'm confused. Also, I have a gray in there right now. If I had a different color, I'd be almost tempted to hit print on just like a, uh, a rock Eevee. If I can connect to my printer right now. I have issues with my desktop sometimes. So lately I've been doing it from my phone. It's not going to work right now. Weird. Oh well. I I might have just been dicking around for no reason. I mean, I got the cool other bull rush, I guess, that I'll actually use now. But maybe I was just doing this for nothing. I Let's do sudden and new now, I guess. Meet Hikate in Farai's Retreat. If the humans of Elysium agreed on anything, it was that there was something mysterious about Hikate. As Persephone's lone confidant, she was the one to know how Cassandra could navigate the twists and turns of Elysium. Do you have a fast travel point over here? I don't. Are you? If I untrack... Nope, that looks like a place that there might have been a fast travel point. There's, there's not even one that I haven't unlocked yet nearby. There just isn't a thing there. All the other quadrants have one. This one has two. This one has none. Talk about short end of the stick here. I guess I'll just travel over here and run over. Do a little bit of a marathon here. Do a trek like I needed to do to part source when there was all that construction in the parking lot. And I had to go through Home Depot to get there. 